All right, there we go. So we didn't get distracted. Hi, everybody. Hey, today we're talking about like unconditional love because Katharina and I really had to practice it with each other over this past week. I mean, we both had some- Well, we practiced it often, but just especially this past week. Especially this past week. Like, we, we are growing very quickly and really transcending the boundaries of, of who we thought we were. Mm -hmm. And every time that happens, it, there's this, this really uncomfortable friction that happens. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we both got to practice unconditional love. So that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And it's important to talk about it in the context of money, power, and sex, because as you're wanting to grow into these things, these more worldly things, you need to have a backbone, a foundation of acceptance for mm -hmm. yourself and your partner, because uh, it's really what is going to help you to grow into these things without it overcoming you and corrupting you and, right. and all of the, the negative connotations of money, power, and sex. Yeah. I mean how are we growing right now? Like I have the, the, the highest paying job I've ever had, which is really cool. And we're, we're living in Maui. We're living in a place that we actually really love. And what a mind fuck that is. What a mind fuck it is to be, to be living your dream life. Cause that's what we're doing. Right. And, and so all of the little things inside of us that come up and be like, Oh, you can't, you, you can't, you don't deserve this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You're terrible. Right. Cause they happen. They and do. the point of unconditional love is to help the other person to experience, um, peace. And, and even though they're going through whatever it is that they're going through, you know, the barrage of thoughts that come in your mind, and tell you all of these negative things about yourself or tell you all of these things that are just simply not true. It's important for your partner to be able to practice unconditional love with you. And that's only happens when you first learned how to practice unconditional love with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that by bringing that as like a backbone of our relationship, it has really strengthened both of us it to really be able has. To, to grow in these, these ways that feel like huge they really do in order for us to in order for us to make the these leaps and bounds that we've been making in life i mean we really have to die to ourselves mm -hmm. and when when that happens there's definitely a part of the ego that says well we've been doing it the same way all of our life why on earth would you change it now changing it is dangerous right earning more money is dangerous living in a beautiful house that you adore is dangerous mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's just scary. I mean, both of us had our fetal position on the egg and on the floor moments this past week, and we were just like, ah, yeah. so much. It's it's the I don't want to deal with it I energy. I don't want to deal. I don't want to deal with this. This is like all too much happening, and and it feels scary because some mm -hmm. there's so much uncertainty, and there's just things that are like. It's, right. it's good at the same time it's new and we haven't dealt with it before and that makes us want to like yeah like little kids be like ah. right and the very first thing you do when you're a child and something's happening that you don't understand is you lash out against the people around you pretend like trying to make it their fault right blame 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 shame yeah blame shame stuff. guilt like you know and um and what's really happening is that is that as we transform is is that you know just like a caterpillar goes into a chrysalis well before it turns into a butterfly first it turns into goop yeah thanks jen and ben Rody for telling us that one yeah first it turns into goop and uh and so so what i did was i actually loaded up a video of 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 what happens inside of a chrysalis and it's really gross and i recognized it in myself i recognized oh i'm just turning into goo so that i can be rebuilt into this thing which is is more in line with who I see on the inside when I close my eyes. Mm -hmm. And that person used to scare the living crap out of me. Right. And so really, when, when she unconditionally loved me through it, and, and we had a very powerful, powerful experience. This was actually on the supermoon. And um, I was, first I was just feeling emotions and I could not place them. I couldn't understand why. I didn't know what was going on with them. But all I knew is that I hated everybody and everything, including my wife who was sitting next to me. And finally, I'm like, I just need my alone time. Just get out of the room. I just need my alone time. Go away. Mm -hmm. And I just needed to process some shit. Because <laughs> I was goop. Yeah. 
And you know, she, she left the room. She respected me and she left the room and she closed the door and I could hear her crying a little bit because I had hurt her. You know, I really did. And I didn't know why I was hurting myself at the same time. You know, but, but I, was, I was feeling my emotions and I was really experiencing them and sitting with them. And that's something that takes a lot of courage to do. Especially as a man, because we're taught you don't feel your emotions. Like, oh, those are bad. You're weak. Mm -hmm. But no, it's like all of these things. And it was really just me angry at myself, me sad about myself. It had nothing to do with her. You know, but because I was feeling them, it affected her because she loves me so much. Anyway, she, I, I, I basically just sort of collapsed for like two hours. After you did some, some like furious writing. I did like some writing. furious, furious automatic writing about how my life is fucking shit. That's precise. And, and just writing all about. And you know, so this is something that I do in my journal is whenever I can't figure out why I'm feeling a feeling, I'll just start writing stuff. I'll just write down what comes up in my subconscious. And it's usually this nasty makes me think that I'm bipolar sometimes when I look yeah. at my journal of like all the happiness in my journal and then all this <laughs> rage. Yeah, just up and down, up that's and down. How, that's how we humans are. I think bipolar is like a really widely overused term. I think it to is. To diminish the fact that humans are emotional creatures and mm -hmm. you know, if you want to pretend like you're just happy all the time, it's... <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean... Yeah, you're happy all the time because you just took Zoloft. Good job. Right, good job. But the, the fact is that your subconscious is still down in there. Your ego is still whispering these things in your ear that are just yeah. terrible. And um, so anyway, after I had my, my emotions and basically just passed out with complete exhaustion, um, you know, she came back in the room and she, she, she picked up the various stuff and she kissed me and she's like, it's time to come to bed. And she just loved me through it. And I recognized that this is something that I'd done with her many times. You know, many times she had broken down and just like lashed out at me with rage and anger. And I had chosen to love her through it because, because love is a choice. Unconditional love is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. You choose it even when it sometimes sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and by doing that, we are able to build each other up, you know, like, we actually posted something on our Facebook page where, where he's a watering can and she's a flower and he's watering her. And, and that's the way that we feel in our relationship. We water each other. And if you, if you look at our emotions, at our moods like a wave and it kind of goes up and down and up and down. Well, when she's, in a, when she's at a peak, I'm in a trough. And when she's at a trough, I'm in a peak. And so we're, we're balancing each other out. We're evening out each other's emotions, which allows us to get through them quicker. And also allows us to start experiencing our peaks together. And allows us to experience our peaks together because when both of us are peaking at the same time, it takes our relationship to levels that we've never before seen or even understood. Mm -hmm. and, and that brings more money, power, and sex into our life. Right, because we both feel like this deeper sense of acceptance with each other. We feel more fully seen and heard and loved right. and accepted. And just that, that, that covering of unconditional love is just so huge. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why all the world religions have talked about, you know, or Jesus talked about unconditional love. Yeah, yeah, actually, and, I mean, in the New Testament, Jesus talks about all the laws in the Old Testament. And he says that all the laws only have one meaning, love your neighbor as yourself. Right, and he is my neighbor. Right, and she's my neighbor. And so I love her the, way, the same way that I love myself. And, and I love myself pretty unconditionally. And when I, when I have trouble loving myself, and, and boy, do I sometimes. I think everybody has trouble loving themselves occasionally. She's there to love me. There, there was a time just uh, yesterday, remember you were sitting on the floor? Oh, yeah. Man, I, she... I mean, I have like all of these people over in Lahaina who are like loving my art, and it is like fucking with me so bad. <laughs> Because I've spent so much time like doubting my art, whether it's good enough, and blah 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 blah, and mm -hmm. what people you know, will think. What people will think. Will they misinterpret it? Yes, all of this stuff, and 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 it was just like overwhelming to me, and I just I I was starting to feel anxious, and I was like, what's going on? And I I was just darting around the house, and I, like I had this feeling on in my chest, and I was like oh, this is anxiety, and then I dropped into it, mm -hmm. and I just started bawling, and I was sitting on the floor, and I was just crying, and, and talking to Paul, just like, oh my god, I just, this is, this is so loud, la, la, la. like, so, right. and, the, and he just sat down there on the floor with me, 
And, and I loved and her. And he loved me. And he didn't try to fix me. He didn't try to like do any of that. And he just was able to hold this 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 gentleness around me while I just poured my eyes out and just just really had a deep emotive experience. And I know that this is something that we've been able to do because we first made it through some of the uncomfortable cries where, you know, you were didn't know what to do and mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do and you would get angry and, and we would get all offended and our egos would get all bruised. And, right. But but choosing to surrender that ego and choosing to surrender these these other ways of being, you know, what we normally see in the world with relationship of, you know, I'm offended. No, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to yeah. hold a grudge or push you away because, oh, your emotions are too messy or oh, I can't deal with that. Or, mm -hmm. Get away from me. Right. Get away from me. This is... You're too much. You're, you're, you're damaged goods. Mm -hmm. Right. And really, it's just our, it's just our psyches mm -hmm. that are, have just been needing to to be able to be seen and, and integrated and to be able to feel welcomed. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're doing is we're welcoming all of... I'm welcoming all of you to the table when I say, I love you even when you're angry. Right. And, and for me, that's so powerful because I had never been, I, you know, in two, two and a half years of marriage, I had been afraid to show her my anger because I know what it looks like. Yeah. And, and, and that is a way of being inauthentic. Right. And it's a way of being disempowered. So I was able to really step into my own power, be angry, be angry at her, even though it was totally unjustified. I, and, I could see that it was just something that you needed to go through and experience. And yeah. even though like I had my, my flight of emotion of just like, oh, I'm so sad. My husband's proud of me. Like I was able to move through it, go read a chapter in my women who run with the wolves book about a rank anger and rage. And mm -hmm. it gave me a whole new perspective. And I was like, ah, right. Like open and, my mind. And then I was able to come back and, and love you when I was done. Right. And, and her doing that took our relationship to a new height because I realized that she loved even the parts of me that I had trouble loving. Just like I love all the parts of you that you have trouble loving. Mm -hmm. Be because Which all of us... helps me love my parts more. Right. Yeah, now, now I, am, I am more easily able to integrate my own anger and, and to understand that anger is a healthy thing instead of anger is this thing to be shunned or scared of. At all costs. At all costs. No, right. be angry. Yeah. I mean, I have a relationship with anger because when I was younger, I really used to feel anger a lot and I never accepted it in myself. And because I never accepted it into my, in myself, I would, I would intentionally not be angry even when anger was totally merited. Mm -hmm. Even when it was totally reasonable for me to be angry. And it got you into a lot of situations that were kind of abusive for you. Right, and it did. It, it got me into situations that were abusive for me and, and really disempowered me. And I mean, really like the, the reason that I the reason that I, I remained a virgin until I was, what, 31 or so was because I was so afraid of my anger and I didn't think that anybody would be willing to love me. Oh, really? Really. Wow. I mean, I had other reasons, but that was the, that was the big one. It was like, I was like, who on earth would love me? I'm so damaged. Mm. And, and then when she did love me and, and she continues to love me, I'm like, okay, this is... That this is what relationships are really made of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and what that's done for me is it's allowed me to move through my anger much quicker. So, so I feel the anger and then I get over it. I felt angry like two or three times in the past three days and I've just felt angry and then been like, oh, I'm angry. Oh, that's actually perfectly justified because of whatever thing is happening. Oh, okay. But that doesn't mean that anger is fuel. Right. And I, it's fuel. It moves you. It, it has a function. It moves you from this point to that point. Right. And like the issue is when anger is like sustained anger and there's like this con continuity of anger and it's never getting resolved and it's just a festering wound. Mm -hmm. You know, angry yeah. people, people right. who are just angry all the time yeah. because they're hurting. Because they're hurting. And victims are violent people. Mm -hmm. So I find whenever I'm thinking something violent, it's because I'm pretending that I'm a victim. And am I really a victim? No, I'm not really a victim. You can't be a victim unless you agree to be a victim. Mm -hmm. You have to agree. Mm -hmm. You can be victorious over anything. You just have to decide. And, and I, found, I found that on, out early in life when, 
you know, things started to not go my way, and I thought to myself, well, they're not going my way, should I, you know, I could either choose to feel terrible about this, or I could choose to see this in a different way, in a different light. I could choose to think, oh, I got a speeding ticket, the cop is an asshole, or I could choose to think, well, you know, I was speeding and I'm glad that I didn't die. Mm -hmm. So are you a victor or a victim? And, and victims are violent people. And remember, I don't remember which book it was, but we, we read where, um, where an argument between two people is just two people arguing over who the victim is. They're both trying to be the victim. I don't remember. I don't remember where we read it. Yeah. But it was, it was a really profound... A race to... A race to, victim, yeah, a race to who's the biggest victim, which of course is disempowering to both people, which makes both people feel like crap, which drives a wedge in the relationship because then both people think that they're disempowered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember where we read it from. We'll have to look around for it. But in our life, we found that when the two of us are arguing, it's, that's exactly the case. And so eventually one of us will be like, hey, let's both stop trying to be victims here. And grow up and be grown-ups. <laughs> yeah. and, and as soon as that happens, like forgiveness and, and unconditional love are not more than two minutes behind. And then we're, we're just like, we've completely gotten rid of the emotions. Well, the emotions have just... The emotions they've, subsided. They've, they've taken, they've run their course. They've run their course. And, and really, when they do, it, it, the emotion is replaced with deeper understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean... For example, you know, Katharina and I have a tendency to shush each other up because we both have big mouths. Yeah, we're and both we're, very talkative. We're both talkative. We're, we're also both very, very smart, very coherent. And so when, when she says something to me or I say something to her, we both get it the first time. Mm -hmm. But the both of us have a need to continue explaining it because honestly, I think both of us bypass our brains and most of what comes out of our mouth comes straight from the soul. And so like when I'm trying to explain myself, it's really because I personally want to understand it, not because I think you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So we, we were, had that conversation yesterday. We had that conversation yesterday in the car as we were, you know, she, she did it to me and I was like, I understand, you can, you can stop talking about it now. I get it and I will integrate this into my life. And then I was like, <laughs> uh, I want to keep talking because it's important to me. Right, and, and once we, once we, we hashed it out that we talk for ourselves and not for the other person, it became so much more clear. We're like, oh, we get it. Better relationship incoming. Mm -hmm. But it took us like that five minute uncomfortable conversation. And first of all, it took me being empowered enough, empowered enough in my, in my own thoughts to say, yes, I get it. And, and I know, and I believe you'll still, you'll still love me even if I essentially tell you to shut up. <laughs> Right, but I had to also be empowered to just say, like, you know, I know that you get it. I also have my feelings and my right. reasons for doing this. Yeah, and, and when, when both of us explained what our reasons were, we realized that we do it to each other all the time. And, and that allowed us... To realize to, we don't have to do that anymore. Right, to realize we don't have to do it anymore. Because I don't like to have even a little bit of friction in my life. Especially with my wife. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no reason for it. And any time that we, either one of us has any friction at all, it's, it's stopping our relationship from growing. And the two of us are really focused on growth. We're really focused on it. Well, we're really focused on harmony. Yeah. Because I feel like you and I function as a unit in the world and it's important that, you know, the cogs and all of it, all the pieces work mm -hmm. and function well together. Especially since we, we do a lot of things together. Right. We have a lot of moving parts. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we do. We have a ton of things going on that we do together. And, and both of us have recognized that, that you know, I'm the engine of the ship and she's the rudder. And, and I'm the guy who's always going, 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 going. And she's so subtle about it. She's like, and now we'll shift direction just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> and without the engine, the ship doesn't go anywhere. And without the rudder, the ship goes aground. Mm -hmm. And so we, we both recognize that in our relationship, we have our own function. We, we each have our own function. And, and when we operate as a unit, we go exactly where we want to go. We do exactly what we want to do. And it's important to respect each other and to realize that we're, we're not the same and that mm -hmm. we don't do things the same way and that we all, we both have our own quirks and unique traits. Yeah. 
that add value to our relationship and when we can unconditionally love all of those parts of ourselves and of each other yeah then we are able to experience just these greater levels of harmony and mm -hmm. you know more money power and sex you know right. it's, it's it really is that way it really is because I never would have been able to go land this really kick-ass job that I have ex unless she had supported me and and sometimes when I get into a negative pattern of thinking, she's the one who breaks me out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I posted about um, something like this. I posted about an abusive relationship that I was in where I was the abusee, and I guess probably the abuser in some ways as well. Mm -hmm. But um, essentially, you know, I had an abusive relationship with somebody who lived in Costa Rica. And um, you know, we were talking about this in the group. And, and, I, and I came to realize as I was writing this story that... The reason that it had gone on, it went on for like five years, but the reason it had gone on so long without me putting a stop to it was because I didn't have any external person to be like, hey, are, are, can you see this? Can you see this pattern? I was in my own zone. Yeah. And so I would, you know, th this person would, would say, hey, you're stupid. And I would think, am I really stupid? And I'd think about it for a while. And I'd be like, well, maybe what they're saying is, you know, like at least partially right. So then the next time they said, you're stupid, I came at it from, the, from an angle of, oh, well, I must be stupid. Mm -hmm. And, and this, is, uh, this was a pattern that took me like five years to figure out and break. But now we figure out our patterns in minutes. Yeah. She sees a pattern. She, she notices it. And she's like, hey, yo, pattern. Look at it. And then I look at it objectively. And I do the same exact thing for her. So yeah, that's something that actually came out of the group that I thought was really cool. And yeah, you, you guys think that we're personal on our, on our videos, man. Like we go deeper in our group. Yeah. Well, we welcome you to join us there, the Money Power Sex Group. And it's, it's really a coaching forum where we get to share with you insights and, and mm -hmm. advice that has really worked for us and in our lives. And we would really love to share it with you as well. So come bring your shit. <laughs> yeah. Come bring your shit into our house. We'll help you clean it up. We'll help you clean it up. And, and, and you get to see some of ours, too, because, like, we go really, really deep in there. And that's, that's, that's the point of it. Is we're to, not the gurus on the cloud. We, we're, we're not. We're real people who have been really walking this path for a while now. And mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of people out there who are really looking for true and lasting harmony and, and really successful relationship and the ability to really know who you are while experiencing a relationship and not getting sucked into like codependent relationship patterns or getting sucked into power struggles and you know not really knowing who i am and all right. this stuff this is the stuff that happens when you get into relationship with people and you're and you don't have that sense of grounding so we would really love to welcome you into our fold and if you would like to join us please send either paul or i or the, the yeah, or, or, or the page. page. Yeah, yeah, just send, send us a private message. Send us a private message. And, and we'll talk and to you we'll about it. we'll talk to you about it and get you added in. Yeah. It's 30 bucks a month because it's a coaching group. You know, you get our time and we really pour into you. So mm -hmm. we feel like it's a really fair value and people yeah. are really getting a good deal with this. And it's really for people who think that their life is worth a dollar a day yeah. or less than a dollar a day. Man, seriously, if I had had the stuff that we have to share, like... For a dollar a day. Oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> no, my life would have been so uh, different. Yeah, so we are giving you all the stuff that we have mm -hmm. that has really prospered us. Yeah. And, and and we are we are just so dedicated to to walking this path, to learning more every day, to really like we spend hours talking about our relationship every single day and it does not bore us. Yeah. So Let us spend some time helping you with yours. yours. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is, it, it's really, it brings us joy to do it. Honestly, I think that the more people who get to experience unconditional love and have healthy relationships, the world becomes a much better place. Right. It does. Because people are feeling accepted. And when people are feeling accepted and unconditionally loved, like, holy shit, the world is your oyster. Because yeah. no longer are you letting all of the opinions of other people like come stick to you like glue. Like it's it's you are able to be free from the bondage and the shackles mm -hmm. of all of this other crap out there. Yeah. All of the abusive 
patterns, all of the, the, the people who try to diminish you. Like, you don't have to live like that. Right. There's a better way. Yep. There really is. And we're continuing to, to hone and tweak that better way all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a fascinating journey for us. And so join us on it. Yeah. She just touched me. I did touch it. <laughs> you gotta get it work soon, babe. Let's get you uh, going. Maybe we'll make your your lunch and everything. Ooh, yeah, I get to go. I get to go to work. This this is gonna be a blast. I work at this really high end art gallery, and and people just cut. I mean, collectors come in there to to collect stuff that's like over four hundred years old, and it is, it is just so cool. This is probably one of the most coveted jobs on the island of Maui, and I just wandered in and got it. And you know, I know why because. You unconditionally love me. That's why. Well, also, you did a lot of, of belief clearing. I did. And a lot of self-worth work. Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah. And I know it's because I held that space, but that's the thing is when you can hold the space for the other person to do their own work and to right. like really clear house about their own perceptions of themselves and like all of the, the limiting patterns that they have holding them back. Mm-hmm. It's you so really, powerful. You really are able to create a space of transformation for the other person. So, yeah, as she has done for me, and as I have done for her, and now we want to do it for you. So anyway, send us a private message. I'm gonna go eat some delicious lunch and go to my amazing grade A job. And we'll talk to I'm you guys later. Paint. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.